In this podcast episode, Mike Thurston welcomes Dr. Andy Galpin, a leading expert in exercise science, who shares his insights on merging scientific research with practical coaching. They delve into key topics such as evidence-based practice, the impact of female physiology on performance, the nuances of strength training protocols, the role of genetics, and the importance of recovery strategies, all while emphasizing the significance of individualization in training approaches. Galpin advocates for an evidence-based approach to coaching, which involves three key components, peer-reviewed research, personal experience, and insights from experts in the field. He believes that effective coaching requires a synthesis of these elements rather than relying solely on one. This holistic approach allows coaches to adapt their methods based on the latest scientific findings while also considering individual athlete experiences. A significant focus of Galpin's research is understanding female physiology, particularly the menstrual cycle's impact on sleep and performance. He acknowledges that while there is a wealth of information available, gaps still exist in the research. His lab is actively working to address these gaps by designing studies relevant to the populations being studied, ensuring that findings can be applied effectively. Galpin challenges traditional narratives in strength and hypertrophy training, particularly the long-held belief that 8 to 12 repetitions are optimal for muscle growth. Recent research suggests that a broader range of repetitions, between 5 and 30, can be effective for hypertrophy depending on the individual and context. He encourages coaches to remain open to new findings and adapt their practices accordingly, emphasizing that different muscle groups may respond differently to various training protocols. When discussing training intensity, Galpin highlights the importance of understanding individual differences in effort perception. He explains that what constitutes a 9 out of 10 effort can vary significantly among athletes, particularly elite competitors who have experienced high-stakes competition. This variability necessitates a nuanced approach to training, where coaches must consider each athlete's unique experiences and capabilities. Galpin emphasizes the utility of the rate of perceived exertion, RPE, as a tool for athletes to gauge their effort levels during workouts. RPE allows individuals to adjust training loads, helping to prevent overtraining or undertraining. By understanding their RPE, athletes can make informed decisions about their training intensity, complementing objective metrics like heart rate. The discussion shifts to the role of genetics in athletic performance. While Galpin acknowledges that genetics significantly influence an athlete's potential, he asserts that hard work and dedication can lead to success, even for those with less than ideal genetic predispositions. He provides examples of athletes who have achieved remarkable feats despite not having the best genetic draw, emphasizing that both genetics and training are crucial for performance. Galpin addresses the common goal of training for aesthetics, particularly among those who prioritize looks over performance. He acknowledges that many individuals want to look good, which requires a disciplined approach to training and nutrition. For those focused on aesthetics, he recommends incorporating cardiovascular training to improve overall fitness and heart health without compromising muscle hypertrophy. Low-impact options like cycling, rowing, or swimming can enhance cardiovascular fitness while minimizing interference with strength training. Galpin critiques the accuracy of popular sleep and performance trackers, such as the Aura Ring and Whoop. While these devices can provide useful data, he explains that they often fall short in accurately measuring sleep quality and stages. Many trackers rely heavily on heart rate data, which may not fully capture the complexities of sleep. He suggests that while these devices can be helpful for accountability and motivation, they should not be solely relied upon for making health decisions. Galpin discusses the effects of alcohol on athletic performance, noting that while some athletes may choose to abstain completely, others may consume alcohol in moderation. He emphasizes that any amount of alcohol can hinder performance, but the extent of the impact depends on individual goals and consumption patterns. For those serious about their training, he suggests limiting alcohol intake to one or two drinks per week, encouraging individuals to make informed choices based on their performance objectives. 
The concept of biohacking is another topic of discussion, with Galpin defining it as using various techniques and technologies to optimize health and performance. He expresses skepticism about extreme biohacking trends lacking scientific backing, arguing that many practices considered biohacking, such as eating real food and staying hydrated, are simply common sense. He emphasizes that optimizing health and performance is a holistic process that involves addressing multiple factors, including nutrition, exercise, and mental well-being. Galpin outlines strategies for enhancing recovery, emphasizing the importance of managing both visible and hidden stressors. He explains that recovery is influenced by various stressors, and individuals must address both physical and psychological stress to optimize performance. Monitoring training loads and recovery metrics, such as heart rate variability, HRV, is crucial to ensure athletes are not overtraining. Proper nutrition, hydration, and sleep also play significant roles in the recovery process. In discussing hydration and performance recovery, Galpin highlights the role of micronutrients in achieving optimal fitness gains. While many focus on calories and macronutrients, he points out that those at a higher level of training may need to delve deeper into micronutrient analysis. For elite athletes, small tweaks in micronutrient levels can significantly impact performance. Understanding micronutrient needs can help address performance issues unrelated to caloric or macronutrient intake. Galpin emphasizes the context-dependent nature of pre-workout carbohydrates, questioning recent studies that claim they do not significantly impact performance. He notes that various factors, such as whether the workout is fasted, the training status of participants, and the type of workout, must be considered. He encourages individuals to consider their training context and personal experiences when interpreting findings related to pre-workout carbohydrates. Galpin explains that while blood tests for performance optimization are primarily available in the United States, a program called Manual Upload allows individuals from other countries to input their data for analysis. This program can interpret blood work results and provide tailored recommendations for nutrition and supplementation based on individual needs. He acknowledges the challenges of facilitating blood work internationally, but assures listeners that they can still benefit from personalized assessments by manually entering their data.